Hello, friends, and welcome back to In the Studio, episode 105. Today, I want to talk a little bit about bouncing parts down to audio and how much flexibility and creative possibilities that opens up. I have an example here to illustrate my point. This project that we're in is another remix I'm working on currently. Um, so I have all the bass and all the synths and all the effects muted because I'm not sure if I could share those parts with you quite yet, but that doesn't matter. We can still um, do this technique and you'll be able to you know, use it in your productions if you wish to do so. So let's get right to it here. So what I'm thinking here is I want to create a little variation um, in this little break here, this little two bar break right here. And that kick drops out. And we'll be bouncing this down to audio and doing some doing some reprocessing to accomplish this. So let's get to it. The first thing I want to do is highlight the section um, that I want to make a variation on. So I'm going to highlight that two bar section and we want to record that to audio. So you can do this one of two ways. You can um, say arm, whatever it is that you're recording, whatever track you're recording down here, and then go file, this recording, render to WAV files, and do it that way. But a lot of times when I'm doing things like this, sometimes I just like to use Edison to record. So that's what I'm gonna do here. I'm gonna pull up Edison. And then one thing I'm gonna do before I start recording, because I wanna record the whole track in that two bar section. So I'm going to record on my pre-master track. I am going to turn off these master plugins though because I don't want to run run this um, bounce through those plugins twice. So I'm gonna turn those off when I'm recording. Now on Edison, I'm going to just go record on play and then play this back a few times. Okay, let's pull this into the playlist, like so. Sometimes I there's a little bit of a delay, so I just wanna make sure this is lined up properly. So I'm just gonna do a little zoom in here. And yeah, you can see there's a little bit of a, of a latency there. So I'm just going to go to my snap function, go to snap to none, and just nudge this over. So it's in time, there we go. That should be, yeah, that should be good there. And then we'll just clean this up. Like so, okay. And I'm gonna, going to put this in the play or the mixer, excuse me. It's going to put this on an open track, which I know it's uh, like 66 is open. My... Okay. And then what I'm going to do is take out all of the audio pieces. So, and, and the MIDI. I'm gonna take out these rides right here because we already have a copy of it here. Take out the shaker. I'll, I'll leave the automation, that's, that's fine. Uh, but take out all the audio in the MIDI. Clap accent, take that out. Do, do, do. Take this, take all those out. And then I'm not using the, I have all these elements muted, so I don't need to do anything with those. Okay, so now let's see if that transitions nicely. Actually, let's turn those master plugins back on. So we can actually hear what's what's happening. Okay. Oh, let's uh actually cut a little bit too much of these off. So that's going to not be what we want. Come here. There we go. Okay. Oh, you know what? That's going through. The master when we want and we have our 
my compression and, and the master plugins on the pre-master. So. There we go. Cool. So now we have a, an audio snip of this uh, two bar section, which we can then um, process a little bit differently and give it a little bit of a different flavor and vibe for that little two bar section there. So what I can maybe do here is maybe pitch this down a little bit. So I'm gonna go to stretch so it maintains its, its timing and maybe pitch this down by, uh, I don't know, 10, 11, maybe 13 semitones. And that'll give it this like that much more of a little lift when it comes back in. We can add a little bit of reverb here as well. Um, maybe even some EQ. Maybe we can just roll off some of the top end. and add a touch of reverb. Maybe I'll just go for whatever it is, you know, whatever reverb you want to use doesn't matter so much. Um, I'm just going to try the little plate from Sound Toys, which I really like this reverb a lot. Maybe give this a little bit of a low cut around 150, that'll work. There we go. Yeah, and uh, maybe you can give it a little bit of distortion on there, you know, just give it a little bit of a different flavor. I just go for this wave shaper. I have a nice little preset called Bust Distort, which is very subtle distortion, and it matches the level. I might even turn down that little that little plate even more, just like 10% or something. Yeah, and then it just allows you to, you know, reprocess and make a little variation on that little two bar section extremely easy. Um, something else that, I mean, you could even like just throw a little like glitch in there if you wanted to. Um, maybe with like, uh, we can use gross beat here just like for an example of things that you can do. Where are you, gross beat? Um, let's see here. I haven't used this plugin in a minute, actually. <laughs> yeah, these are pretty crazy. Um, could just like automate that up for a second. Let's try that just for fun. Oh, yeah. Maybe do this uh, like right before it kicks back in. I don't know. Something that you could try. Maybe turn the amount down a little bit. I have no idea how this is going to try, but or how it's going to sound. Do something like that. Um, but this gives you um, options, and it's extremely easy to make little interesting fills and variations. 
and um, it helps keep your track interesting. And yeah, so that's the video for today. Reprocessing and re and bouncing out parts um, and working with audio. So hopefully that was useful. Leave me a comment or question and I'll catch you soon. Take care.